hopefully everything is all good let's see here let me double check make sure we went live we should have sweet awesome okay guys so today um while i get my other screen up here i'm going to talk to you guys about what we're going to be doing today so what we're going to do is i figured with uh, a lot of younger people looking at art schools and colleges and all that other sort of thing. It might be really handy to talk about uh, portfolios. Uh, this is something that is really scary to a lot of people. It's just portfolios are these big, crazy, scary monsters um, that you have to put together for applications and like, what do I put in? Da, da, da. Like, it's hard to know sometimes like what's good to put in and what's not good to put in. So I'm showing you guys my Ringling portfolio. Ringling is an art school based in Sarasota, Florida. Um, now to be completely transparent, Ringling is a very expensive school. Um, it is not something that I would uh, necessarily recommend for the average person if you can't afford to go, only because honestly a lot of the stuff that I learned at Ringling you can learn like on your own or at like a cheaper school. Not to put Ringling down or anything, <laughs> just being bloody honest with you. Let's see, let's get this window up here. Um, anyway, so when you apply for any sort of art school, you have to pay attention to what sort of things that they want and what you're going to be doing. Like for example, if you're applying to illustration, which is what I did, uh, it's pretty general. There's nothing like too hyper specific as far as like what you have to include. It's honestly better if you're when you're looking at something like general like like illustration that you be well, general. You don't want to put just animals or just humans or like just landscapes. So you don't want to do that. Um, you want to be kind of varied. And so you'll notice as I open this here, you guys will see that I have different portfolio or different folders here for you guys. Um, I'll be going through each one of these to show what sort of stuff I included, and I'll be talking just a little bit about why I decided to include it in my portfolio. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. So the first one, it's not super exciting, um, just, just letting y'all know, it's not super crazy exciting. I had these two illustrations that I did of, uh, let me grab a layer here so I can do some writing. So this here is just basically a ship, um, it's just a boat, but the reasons why I included it is that because it shows that I'm experimenting with lighting, uh, with shape with water so it kind of mixes in landscapes and other elements that are really difficult um, and then I also it's it's an unusual color so I'm playing with color because I mean water isn't purple it's not black like it's you know green blues all kinds of things um, but it also was showing me painting with white painting with light it was you know it was just a real experimental piece for me and so I figured this would be a great way to show them that I'm that I have what's called potential. And one of the things that they do in art school is they look for, okay, what sort of potential does this person have? What sort of, you know, growth can we expect out of this person? Are they willing to try new things? Are they willing to experiment? Are they or are they the kind of artist that's just gonna sit here and do the same thing, not grow, stagnate, that sort of thing. That's one of the things that they look for in, in your portfolios is its potential. It's not just, oh well, how well do you draw because if you actually look in on this like it's not drawn very good it's not like like it's it's not drama like it's like what is this I don't know what that is I don't know what that is you know like what's all of this <laughs> this is a dome <laughs> you know so like it's not necessarily the most skillful drawing that I've ever done but what it did do is it showed them that I was willing to experiment try difficult tasks difficult things playing with color, playing with texture, because you've got mist and water in here, you know, it's just it's one of those, that's why I decided to include it in my portfolio. Um, the other one in terms of like just objects or items that I included was a study that I did of the Full Metal Alchemist pocket watch. So this was sort of like my, <laughs> this is the, yeah, the FMA, this is the State Alchemist watch. Um, I don't know if any of them knew that it was from an anime. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny that I got to put that in there. Um, but it was, I actually, I have the actual watch. I actually bought one of the, like, you know, like the cool little watches that they sell. And I did a study of it. I took a photo. Um, I played with light as far as, like, because it's metallic. But it's not, like, a super shiny metallic. It's a very blase, kind of faded, jaded metallic. Um, but it has... 
um, an embossed, like a raised sort of like logo on it. Um, but it also has this really weird chain where it's like in chunks. And so that was, that took forever. This chain took a really long time. But that's why I included this is also I added color in here. It's literally not just black and white and gray, which it's a silver watch, but like there's reds in here, purples, there's some greens and blues in here, you know, some more reds over here. So it was a really good way for me to show them, hey, look, I see an object and I see that it's gray skin, it's a silver object, but I'm not just drawing with gray um, or black or white. I'm experimenting with different colors, different textures. And again, texture, like there's a lot of texture in this piece. So that's why I included it in my portfolio. It was just, these two were more just experimental pieces that I wanted to include in my portfolio and kind of show them, hey, I can do all these, all these other things. So the next one is landscape um, or like backgrounds, environments, that sort of thing. Um, those of you who know me or have watched me for a while know that that's my preferred subject. <laughs> um, however, I wasn't always very good at them. Um, I am from Colorado. So these were some trees I drew up in Nessus Park. They're not very good to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I don't know what these sticks are and like the branches like get wider and then thinner. Like that doesn't normally happen in trees like that. Uh, but that's okay because the point is just showing that I'm experimenting with texture. I'm experimenting with shape. I'm experimenting with form. Again, the big thing that they look for is potential. That means are you learning? Are you trying? Are you experimenting? It's not when you make a portfolio for art school, it's not just about how like skilled you are in this moment because the purpose of you going to their art school is to grow that's literally the reason why you're going and so they want to get this idea from you is this someone that can grow that can learn that's open-minded same thing with this like look at these trees I did over here versus these over here like <laughs> here's a branch here here's a branch is this a branch is this an island I don't know is this moss? Is this grass? I, I don't know. Are these vines? I don't know. But it was just me experimenting with shape and value. Notice how in the closer areas it's really nice and dark. And as you go further away, it's much lighter, it's less saturated. I was showing them that I understand value, that I understand what's called atmosphere, which is really, really, really important in landscapes, environments, that sort of thing. Because when you draw landscapes and environments, you're not just drawing the objects in them. You have to figure out the lighting, the, like, is it a warm place? Is it a cold place? Is it somewhere you would want to be? Is it tropical? Is it temperate? You know, that sort of thing when you're thinking about environments, as far as, like, nature is concerned, that stuff you have to think about. And that's what this piece was for me, was me kind of playing and experimenting with that. And then these two, here's a, just another, just another aspen. Another tree with some twigs. Um, I drew this during the snow because it was in March. Um, also in Nessus Park. Uh, and then when it comes to these, so these are pen drawings at, at um, our my my house. So the, this is a ginormous lilac tree um, that's in my neighbor that was in my neighbor's backyard. And then these are just some more trees and stuff that was also in the neighbor's yard. Uh, so, and then, then there was, there was a little crow sitting here and it was the cutest thing. Um, but what this was, is this was a texture thing. I'm experimenting with hatching, cross hatching, um, like the little dots and circles. Like, you know, I don't want to say, I don't think I had any stippling in here. But I mean, you could kind of almost borderline call all these leaves stippling, trying to figure out all these different shapes and textures. Also line weights, the line weight is thicker here than it is down here. So I'm experimenting with line, with texture. All of these little tiny things, like they seem so mundane and boring, like, oh, and maybe even overwhelming. I have to think about this, I have to think about that, I have to think about this. But the more you can show them in your portfolio, and you want to try to condense this to as few pieces as possible. I think they only let us send 20 um, was the maximum that we were allowed to send them, um, which 20 is technically a lot for a portfolio, but I think it was like up to like a certain amount. Um, and the way that they did it for us is they had us upload to a website called Slideshow 
and we were allowed to make different galleries. And so I made one for props, I made one for landscapes, one for animals, one for figures, so that they could see how I kind of sort separated everything out. But they could see that, oh, I understood that I need to show them all these different things. So again, planning your portfolio is really, really, really important. And the sooner you start on it, the better. Technically, we're in April now, so a lot of, like, applications are going to be either opening or they already have opened. So the window is going to start closing. So if it's something that you want to do, you want to apply to somewhere where you need a portfolio and you haven't started yet, you really need to get on it. It's not something you can throw together overnight. I mean, you can, but I wouldn't advise that. <laughs> that's, I definitely would not advise it. Um, but that's what I did here. I was focusing on, like, I've got three different tree types. I've got this one that's sort of like a pine, and this one was just like a general tree. And then here, these were all lilacs. I don't know if you guys have ever seen an actual lilac tree. They're gorgeous and they smell amazing. And then this was from the other view. This was looking east and then this was looking south from our other neighbor. Um, they had like this nice big like house and they had, you know, like the typical shingles. And then they had like this weird tarped greenhouse thing going on. And then there was also um, like a fence and it had like ivy and all that good stuff. So that's, you know why I decided to include stuff like that is, again, that's a texture thing. It's a texture thing, showing that I can experiment with buildings, perspective, you know, fence. I hadn't had really a lot of perspective before, so it was something kind of new. Um, and then the last two, in terms of landscape, this one I mostly focused on water. Um, drawing water is really, really, really difficult. So that was the focus of me sending them this one, because I wanted to show that I can experiment with texture. Um, I wasn't so much worried about the animal in this one, um, and like the rocks in the back are kind of meh. Um, but fun fact about this one, my previous teacher at my animation school actually um, has this original piece. He bought it from me, which is really awesome. And then this last one was also mostly just texture and color experimenting. I mean, mushrooms, moss, lichen, water, that sort of thing. Just kind of experimenting with, with that. This is a really, really, really old piece. <laughs> But as you can see also, like, you know, zooming back out, you know, it's not necessarily that I was really, really skilled at drawing environments. It was something that I enjoyed, yes, but it wasn't necessarily something that I had a lot of knowledge about. I didn't necessarily have a lot of skill about it. It was still something kind of new to me. Um, but, you know, I did the best that I could and tried to make sure that I showed color ones. I showed, like, ones without color where I focused just on line. I tried to do a painting. Again, showing them potential, and then I was willing to experiment. So we're going to move on to uh, the animal section. I did include an animal section. So, oh, this was my original portfolio that I submitted to Ringling College. Um, so I had my so when I applied to community college, I didn't have to submit a portfolio. I just got right into it. And then when I applied to art school, I had to submit a portfolio. So this is like, technically it's my portfolio after my animation degree. Um, it was basically showing what I'd learned during my animation degree and then applying it to art school. Does that make sense? I'll get, uh, I'll wait for an answer before I continue. But yeah, basically, yeah, it was my second portfolio. <laughs> yeah, technically, I didn't have a first one, but this was for yeah. So this is this is where it was after animation school. So that's why like I tell people that just you know like I, yeah, I went to animation school, but I didn't really know how to draw super well even after my animation degree. And uh, but like I knew the basics, and that's why I decided to go to art school um, is to get like another like set of education to actually learn about how to actually draw. <laughs> I could animate, like I knew the technicalities of it and I have some old animations laying around so I knew what to do. I just, I didn't really have the skills to give me what I needed to make good animations. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go to art school and I'm gonna do illustration so that I can actually learn how to draw. And then I never went back into animation. I just went into comics, storyboarding and manga instead. <laughs> So I ended up going to just to studies to learn how so I could draw better animation and I ended up never going back to animation. So kind of funny how that works out. 
So the next portfolio um, is animals. Um, well, it's, it's a piece of the, part of the portfolio is animals. Um, this is characters. The, this is Coco. For you guys who, who know who Coco is, this is his original form. Um, he looks really not scary and not mean. <laughs> he was actually, like, he's actually begging for pets here. So he was actually this sort of, like, really derpy, like, cute little bird that follows, like, someone around. Like, that was his original purpose. And now he's kind of turned into this really mean jerk <laughs> who hates everyone and has this, like, like inferiority syndrome. <laughs> it's kind of funny how he evolved that way. Um, but what I did is I went to... Let me zoom in some more. What I ended up doing to get the animal portion, I didn't reference. I did reference some photos, like like this one was from a photo. Oopsie. Like this one is from a photo, um, but the other ones I, I actually went to a zoo. This one's a photo, but I actually went to a zoo. I actually went to a zoo, an aquarium. Um, there were like these weird horses there, camel, penguins, jellyfish, um, some toucans, a cassowary, I don't know what kind of bird that was, um, some lions, some sort of African um, antelope or something. So, <laughs> yes. But, and these were 30 seconds. So I made sure when I did these, like I wrote down how long they took. So 30 seconds, guys. You know, each one of these was my drawing of in 30 seconds. You know, plus the other thing you have to realize when you're drawing animals is they move. Especially when you're at a zoo, you don't know what that animal's going to do. It could sit there, it could be sitting there just chilling. Or, like, it may sit there and you get three seconds in and then it gets up and moves. <laughs> no! <laughs> you know, but, like, that's the reality of drawing animals. Um, you know, same thing with the horse here. Like, he's, like, it's like I started drawing him and I only got this far and then he started, like, eating or moving, doing whatever. So originally his head was up, and then he moved his head down, so I think that's why this got so disjointed. <laughs> it's originally he was just standing there, and he's like, no, nah, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> and then with the camel, I didn't get very far with the camel before he moved. And then the penguin was just like a really quick, just shape drawing. But again, these aren't meant to be like super crazy drawings. And yes, I submitted this drawing to Ringling just like this. I didn't even finish it. The reason why I didn't finish it is I was showing them, look, I understand there's a face here. I understand that the fur is going a certain way. I understand there's a basic shape here. There's a basic auto save. <laughs> I understand there's a basic shape here. I was showing them that I understand that there are basic shapes and there are volumes. And I was showing them texture. Like this fur here, that's a lot of texture. And so I was showing them that I understand that. Same thing with the deer, you know. I didn't finish this. Like I have, you know, like some weird lines and some weird shading going on, maybe a little bit of line shadow. But I was just showing them that I understand form, shape, or I was showing them what my understanding of that was. So even so think about that also. When you submit artwork to, you know, your to your portfolio, something that may help is that you maybe purposely not finish a piece. Show them something that's a work in progress to kind of give them a view into how you're thinking about the piece. Cuz there are some people that just start a piece and just work your way out, but they don't like plan or like like they don't plan it ahead of time. They just kind of like boom dive right into it. And if that's something that you can do, you should show them that. Now, don't do all of your practice work and then erase it to make it look like you do that. Don't do that. Like you know hopefully that makes sense. You're kind of just showing them that you understand animals. And then the reason why I included this drawing of Coco is because I also included these other drawings of Coco. So I'm showing them character, right? So here's the, you know, here's the original. And then down here, you have all of these different sketches of this character to show, hey, look, I'm thinking about character design, character concepts, but it's an animal. I've got different emotions here, different angles. Like here's a front view, a side view, like a side and a front, a three quarter view, like sort of a three quarter view. You know, different poses here. You know, that's something that I'm showing them that, I, yes, 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 I'm thinking about these things as far as developing characters and creatures. How does it move? How does it walk? How does it stand? Um, like, like what kind of emotions does it have? That sort of thing. Um, and these drawings aren't clean. Like, like, look how rough this body outline is. It's really, really rough. I mean, I barely finished this one. You know, so like, but, so that's what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to have like these super like finished, pristine pictures for your portfolios because there's two different types of portfolios. There's application portfolios and then there's like your actual like 
professional portfolio when you're applying to art school it's okay to have a rough portfolio now if you're going to like say like this crazy company you want to be careful about what pieces you show that aren't complete you want to be intentional with which ones you show and why um but like you can still show sketches and unfinished work and messy work in your portfolios as long as it has a purpose so just keep that in mind um same thing animals here different color showing about shading and form and then I understand where a wolf is I understand that there's a lake here like here like here like here and it has some sort of you know perspective to it um same thing with this owl <laughs> this tree oh my gosh um you know it's an owl it's texture it's color it's atmosphere you know I included this in my animal portion just because I wanted to show that hey look I'm trying to draw birds I'm trying to draw unusual animals uh, you know, I thought about how the shadow, you know, works on the wings. I thought about that sort of stuff. And then this one I also included um, because it was it's completely different than my other ones. It also has a lot of hatching, has a lot of texture here on his fur. Um, it has, you know, some shadow down here. It was basically just a decent piece showing that oh, I'm thinking about how fur works and how hair works. Um, and, and shading and it's also kind of different than my other works like these are pretty you know pretty loose pretty rough um, but then I have a piece down here that's a little bit more finished compared to the other ones even though it's not completely finished because I didn't include his butt um, but it's like mostly more finished than like say the other ones are so I hope that was hope that was helpful for the animal portion um, and then the last one is figure um, there's no like crazy nudity or anything in here um, so you don't need to worry about that but with figure uh, I was really experimental with this one as well um, this one uh, yes I included this is texture I mean look at all the different textures I have going on in here I was all about digital painting and texture when I was applying to art school it was like a phase that I was in so I was experimenting a lot with color and temperature and texture in a digital way mostly just using effects and layer blending modes that sort of thing this was originally a concept for um a character that i was doing for my manga forever ago this was one of her first concepts um, but i thought it was kind of neat so i kept it and put it in the portfolio but it's very like experimental so i thought it was kind of neat um this one i liked because it showed the rough um the rough one um, and then this one and then this as well the whole page all three of them were 40 minutes so it was about 45 minute study between all the different drawings um, kind of showing the practice version to kind of get a rough idea of gesture shape um, and this was in 2012 most of these pieces were drawn from to th in 2011 and 2012 so most of this stuff is 10 years old now this isn't recent work and by any stretch at all so the, a lot of this work is at least 10 years old um, so I've grown a lot since then and what I'll do after this is I'll show you guys the difference between what I did then and what I can do now um, anyway some more figures like these are just gestures um, I actually rotated the paper when I did these two here so these were actually like someone doing a bridge um, and then someone just laying down but all I focused on was the pose the gesture like what are like to the you know to the left to the right forward you know leaning you know like you know hands you know hands on his knees that sort of thing you know all I was focused on was gesture I wasn't trying to focus on doing a really good drawing you know it was just gesture pose um, these ones were more like trying to be more finished this one was a weird perspective for me so I really struggled figure is still where I struggle the most um, but basically you know I did a lot on the hair this was sort of what I focused on on this one was I was learning about hair in this piece so that was what I that was what I focused on um, you know and then like her legs I kind of did this a little bit um, these were some more gestures these were fun because I didn't do them in a normal way usually I did digital art when I did my my figure drawing course um, but I decided that I wanted to do something traditional and I picked two two different colored Copic markers um, and I just drew with those instead I didn't do I did two warm-ups in pencil and then I just switched a marker and like if it came out great if it didn't it didn't <laughs> you can see here in this one um, right here how I changed the shape on the neck and then right here I changed the shape of like his waist his hip area 
Um, I was like, eh, that wasn't quite right. And then here, you can see I, I kind of <laughs> cut off part of his head. Um, I didn't quite get that one right, and I tried to fix it with the orange, but it still looks really weird with the blue. <laughs> um, you know, so that's, you know, and, and these aren't necessarily good, to be honest. Like, these are meh, these are okay. But that wasn't the point. The point was practicing gesture. It was learning shape and value and like how the shadows fall. So it's again, it's not about doing good drawings. It's about showing that you're learning, you're experimenting, you're trying new things. Yes, you want to have skill to some degree, but that's not like the most important thing in a portfolio. At least I don't think so. This was another like experiment piece. This is very sketchy line work. Then I have the figure here, but what's interesting about it is because of the way that I did my values, I have these nice bright lines here, like showing his form, you've got a hand, there's his knee, like here's a lamp. Like you can like you can still define everything, even though the colors are completely whacked, they're completely abnormal colors. And then there's a little bit of texture back here. You know, and then the whole thing has a texture. And then the way I did the light here, where you kind of see it doing this. You know, I, it was an experimentation piece. I was really, really lucky that my figure drawing teacher was willing to let me, like, experiment a lot and try different things. Like, he trusted me to try different things. Um, and it worked out really well. And then this one was just more of, like, a more realistic one um, where he just was kind of leaning back with his, you know, his hand under his head on some cloth and stuff. And I just happened to get the view opposite. So this was really good for what's called rim lighting. You know, so this was a really good piece for me to include because rim lighting is really, really, really difficult. Um, it's it's hard to make something look well lit and well visible, but also have the lighting be accurate because rim lighting usually just has the brightest highlights right around the edge. <laughs> so that's really, really difficult. So I figured this is a great one to include. So again, with figures, a lot of it was just me experimenting, trying new things, try this, try that all kind of all including it in my portfolio together and that's it that's literally that's that's literally all I included <laughs> you know so I'm going to show you guys again you know the different things that I included I've got a ship and then a drawing of a pocket watch that I did an actual pocket watch and then a photo of a boat you know a ship you know with good lighting color experimentation and then for landscapes, I included landscapes that I saw in real life, what's called direct observation, which is very important to include. One of the things you want to be sure you include in your portfolio is that direct observation, which is basically you drawing something that you see in front of you. Giovanni, that's one reason why I'm trying to get you to draw that more, is because that is something they will expect to see in your portfolio, and that's something you need to be able to do. So that's really, really important. Um, and then, you know, these two bottom ones and this top right one were just purely from imagination, whatever I wanted to do. But I experimented with texture, lines, line width, line shape, that sort of thing. Um, and then experimented with texture down here doing this water and, and watercolor. So. And then going back to animals, I actually went to the zoo. I drew animals in real life. There's that direct observation again that I keep talking about. Um, and it's hard. Like, your drawings aren't going to be perfect, but that's okay. And animals are really, really difficult for a lot of people. Frankly, I find animals way easier than drawing people, but maybe that's just me. Um, you know, just like a fun little piece I did with my character. You know, this character and this character, they're pretty much the same. You know, showing that I can play with texture and color and create like a little 3D piece just kind of for fun you know um, and so you can include your own characters like you if you have OCs you can include them just make sure that you know of course that it's appropriate try to you know give a reason that you're including it you're not just including it just for fun you know that sort of thing so um, and then showing I can do a character final and then have all these like like we'll do a character sketches blah 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 and then have a character final as well kind of experimenting with that and then again with figure, you know, when I was looking at what figure drawings I wanted to include, I included some gestural studies, ones that were quick. Um, same thing with these gestures down here in the orange. I included just really quick loose stuff, you know, boom, 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 wham, bam, done. And then I did like a little bit more, you know, texture experiments, ones where I sat down and I focused maybe on one particular part of the body to do a study of. Um, more experimentation, playing with texture and lighting, and then one where I tried to, you know, these two I tried to be a little bit more realistic with. 
So when you're looking at your portfolio, I hope that was helpful to you guys. You know, maybe give you guys a place to start. If you guys have portfolio questions, like feel free to leave me a comment below. Um, this was about a 30 minute video and what I'll probably be doing is I'll probably be editing it, kind of take out some of the boring parts where I kind of got, you know, quiet or still for a little bit. But I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please, please leave me a comment below. I will definitely get back to you guys as soon as I can. If you are applying to Ringling, best of luck. You know, I hope it goes well. If you're applying to any other school, good luck. I hope it goes well. It's a really, really intimidating thing. Applying to a portfolio or, apply, or making a portfolio and applying to a college. It's just a really scary experience and there's like so much pressure to it. Um, so if you guys need help, let me know. Um, I'll be here for you. That's what I do. So this has been Art Crumbs and thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate everyone helping me out. If you guys could, please leave me a like, maybe a subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful night.